There are no more heroes. You have killed them. You and I. It sounds a little bit like Nietzsche when he said there's no more God. We've killed them. But seriously, we live in a world nobody's protected anymore. I want to talk about the rise of tribalism and what it means for you. It's pretty important. Like, just think about this. Whoever you admire, 50% of the world hates. If you like Donald Trump, there's 50% of the world that really doesn't like him. I'm not talking about just slightly annoyed. I'm talking about despises. If you like Joe Biden, same thing. If you like Elon Musk, 50% of the world idolizes him. They're in his tribe, and 50% of the world can't stand him. He's the exploitative, know-it-all billionaire. What does this mean, and why is it important? Well, I was in the shower, and I was thinking, you know, we used to live in a time where you looked up to somebody, and you you had this source of continual inspiration, that's gone. Because if you're a human, which I'm assuming you are if you're listening to this, uh, you get affected by negative criticism. In fact, the human brain actually elevates negativity. It's called negativity bias. So one of my mentors, Alan Nation, used to say, Ty, you know what sucks about public speaking? You give him great talk, and the whole place gives you a standing ovation. But at the very end, when they sit down 1%, or one person even, stands up and says, boo, guess what everybody will remember? Guess what the media will write about? Guess what your family will hear about? They're only going to hear about the boo. So we're wired to override all good with just one or two bad. I was trying to get a Airbnb the other day. I'm traveling right now. And it was crazy because there was like 30 good reviews to this Airbnb. And there were, I, I sorted it by like, you know, most liked, least liked. There was one negative one. It's like, oh, the place was not dirty. And I just could catch my brain forgetting about the 30 amazingly positive reviews. So what happens in the world, you got two dynamics happen. One, introvert, uh, introverts rule the internet. Number one, there's really three. Number one. So think about it. If you're an extrovert, you're not scrolling as much. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's extroverts and introverts doom scrolling on Instagram and TikTok. But in general, you know, people who are more extroverted, the definition of extroversion is you're a little more social, you're out, you're interacting with people, you're on some team, sport team, after work, you go, hey, out with your friends at a bar, blah, blah, blah. And so you have already, this happened in the 1990s with the internet, was the rise of introverts. Number two... The, the, the second trend is you have the rise of dark triad traits, the voice of dark triad traits. So those are narcissism, Machiavellian, and psychopaths. So Machiavellian people are usually people who have been bullied, the underdogs, not the alphas, the betas. So who tears down, what is a hero? A hero is an alpha. So all of a sudden, and the third trend, by the way, is the death of one or two media sources and the rise of millions of medium source, uh, media sources, meaning now you get your news and information from hundreds of Twitter channels, YouTube channels, comments on Instagram. These are all sources feeding in your brain. So those three are the right lead to the death of heroes and the rise of tribalism in a way that I'm not sure, even sure if it's healthy or not. I, I haven't, I haven't come to my final conclusion. <laughs> as to whether it's healthy or not. So here's the deal. What it does do, it creates a more pessimistic, nihilistic world. And it's not even just humans. Now I see people, I don't know if Putin is doing the world's greatest job. I don't know what marketing agency he hired, but like if you go on TikTok, there's like, Putin's the greatest leader of all time. And then of course, in America, there's hate. So 50% of the world, it seems, seems to really like Putin now. You see that in the Middle East. You see that in Asia more. I was traveling in Thailand, Dubai. You'll see, like, you get geo-targeted comments. And it's like, oh, Putin's a good guy there. If you're in the Washington, D.C., <laughs> you know, talking to people, there's no rise of the Putin hero. There's the death of Putin. So what's happening with negativity bias, everybody having a social media news outlet, the rise, Machiavellian people and high psychopath. Machiavellian narcissists, they comment more. So you got a slanting of social media comments towards people who are more mentally unstable. So you have the rise of millions of little tribes like, oh, I'm in, the, you know, this person, this kind of psychopathic introvert 
who has access to 10 channels, Instagram, YouTube, Snap, Threads, Facebook, blah, blah, blah. They're now posting, oh, I hate Ben Shapiro and I love this person or I love Ben Shapiro and I hate this person. And it's creating basically chaos. So <laughs> take a break from social media. There, there's no easy solution except you have to meter yourself. Like don't be doom scrolling. Just endlessly, mindlessly scrolling and the algorithm's getting so good. Oh, it's tough not to anymore. It is really tough not to doom scroll. So you, because it's going to scramble your brain. Because humans need heroes. Tribe, the rise of tribes is kind of okay. But the death of all heroes from the negativity bias, any hero you look up to. There, I saw a guy interesting on Instagram and TikTok. His only account is roasting historical figures. So he was like roasting Mother Teresa. You know, she's considered a saint by some in the Catholic tribe. Now he's creating a tribe that despises Mother Teresa. Oh, only, you know, he said only 3% of the money donated to Mother Teresa went to charity, which I have a hard time believing. She didn't pocket the money. We know that because she definitely, nobody's ever accused of her having a materialistic life. So it's just, you can whack and knock down everybody's mentors, everybody's hero. And what you're left with is a race to the bottom where you become nihilistic. You go, nobody's worth listening to. Everybody's bad. Nobody has any redeeming values. And that's super deadly to the human psyche. We were, remember, we're tribal by our DNA. So we evolved to live Dunbar's number in groups of 150 people. Robin Dunbar, the famous anthropologist, said, you know, if you look, and if you look at this, there's a Matt Lieberman, he wrote a book, Social, How the Wiring, he's done all these tests with fMRI machines as to how our brain, um, how many social connections we can have. Well, we can have about 150 close people, which matches the size of a small village that existed in, you know, Viking Sweden or uh, in Africa or in South America. The United States, the Native Americans were grouped into small groups. In most of the last 10 to 15,000 years, people have lived in these smaller tribes villages we used to call them and within there you kind of had a hero you had your local hero you know now if you put them on a global scale that little tribe's hero just like your mom and dad they wouldn't stand up to scrutiny i mean my dad was a pro bodybuilder i grew up thinking oh my dad's super strong now if i compared him to this forget his name something kolb he's benching 1100 pounds on instagram my dad could bench like 400 so it's almost like, oh, my dad wasn't really that strong because now on a global basis, when you compare him outside of that tribe I grew up with, and so it's like the death of my dad as a hero. And that is not healthy for the world. So the solution is you have to go, you have to get off social media in terms of what you're watching. Like train your Instagram algorithm to show you a lot of animal stuff. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. Mine shows me like so much meat. Elephants dogs <laughs> watch what don't like too many things funny pranks i like you know because i rarely do starbucks but I mean, it's the only thing around here um because it's just not good for the soul to have nobody to admire and you know i'm big on mentors and how important they play in your life but no mentor stands under global scrutiny of ten thousand dark triad cynics and critics you're gonna we're gonna end up in a world where it's so tribal i don't even know what happens to democracy a eh? you know what happens what do you do you already seen that in the united states what do you do i mean people always republicans and democrats in america for the last hundred years didn't like each other but at the level it's at now it's just nuts because a hundred years ago not every crazy cynical high dark triad, narcissist, psychopath, Machiavellian person had a way to communicate their hate. They just, you know, they could talk to their buddy. But now you give them a TikTok channel and a little knowledge on how to go viral and they're influencing 100 people or 100,000 people. So there's real tricky times. I, I'm This is something I want to keep thinking about. I, I just was like, I'm going to record on this subject. I haven't even totally thought it through. 
Um, I've talked to some top scientists on the general vibe. The general vibe is you just got to shut off most of the voices. You will need some heroes in life, even if they're flawed. And all heroes have always been flawed. Humans are flawed from the standpoint. It's not flawed. It's just humans are naturally exploitative. And even the nicest person that you know, name the nicest person, your grandmother, your, I don't know, your priest, your iman, your pastor, whoever you could say, I live with the Amish for two and a half years. Whoever you consider the most exploitative person or the least exploitative person, you know, the nicest person, if you really put them under highly logical scrutiny, they're going to fail too. I mean, they might pay taxes in a country where that country's military goes out and exploits other countries. There you go. They've contributed to a system. They might have an iPhone and that iPhone, what does that iPhone do? How was it made? Oh, it was made by the largest corporation in history that probably has child laborers going blind, putting together little iPhones in Southeast Asia. Do your heroes care about that? Do they boycott Apple and say, I'm not going to have an iPhone because an exploitative? No. So by nature, even the person you admire the most, that you think's the greatest person, give me 15 minutes with them. And if I want to go into my dark triad place, I could rip them apart. And then all of a sudden you're left with nobody again. It's like, who, who do I look up to? And then if you look up to no other people, you're left with yourself. And then if you put yourself under scrutiny, then what? You put yourself under scrutiny and then you fail too. I fail, you fail. When, if, you, if everything you've ever thought or done was put on a movie screen for a billion people to watch, would they find anything that you've ever done sketchy? Like, be real. Everything you ever thought of doing, maybe you didn't have the courage to do it, but you thought about it. You know? Now, what's the problem with that? Well, you have to have some self-esteem. So if there's, if there's too much scrutiny on even yourself, you become self-loathing. You hate yourself. And so you see the rise of depression probably has to do with what this whole episode I'm talking about. This whole talk up to now has been why you probably have this super rise of depression, super rise of nihilism of people who just go, like, I'm just going to play video games. And of course, you got the rise of video games. And then because it's a, the rise of, I, I saw this Bob Marley movie, which, by the way, is the best movie of the year. It's called One Love. Made a hundred. I knew it was a good movie. I always check box office mojo to see if the market agreed with my opinions. It, it's made 175 mil. That's good for a, bio, a biopic or biopic, people call it. You know, it's just about his life. And <clears throat> I was thinking, Bob Marley, love this guy. Do I want to really read everybody's opinion on him? Because somebody's going to be like, well, you know, he had, I think he, in the movie they talk about where he, he, he was with one woman, then he cheated and she ra helped raise his kids, but they were friendly. So it's going to be like, well, Bob Marley, like, oh, he's your hero. He's this, he won a world peace, but he at home, he was this. Man, nobody stands under that scrutiny. Now, which leads, I know what some comments are going to say. People are going to say, that's why you need God. That's why you need religion. That's why you need spirituality. Because at the end of the day, humans are all flawed. And so if you're like religious, you'll be like God, traditional God. If you're more spiritual, you'll be like, you know, nature, the universe is bigger. But then if you put the universe and nature and physics under scrutiny, it's more ruthless than humans. Exploitation. Remember I was talking about exploitation a minute ago? What I was saying is almost all forces are exploitative, meaning they care about themselves more than something else. Like bacteria in your stomach isn't thinking about your children. It's thinking about in its own primitive sense of thinking. It's acting in its own best interest. And, and so is your DNA, you know? And so is... Donald Trump's DNA and Joe Biden's DNA and the people you idolize the most or the people you hate the most. And the crazy thing is from their perspective, they're doing a good thing. Like if you read the biographies or autobiographies of who are considered the most evil people in history, I wish I could interview, you know, Genghis Khan or something like that. You know, this huge conqueror. I mean, he didn't think he was doing, he's like, 
I'm doing this for my legacy. I'm doing this for my family. I'm, you know, I'm conquering. Look at all the good that happened. Look at all the children that were born. But then you put them under scrutiny. You're like, oh, can't admire Genghis Khan. So you got humans. People say, well, forget humans. You need to admire nature. But nature's ruthless. When a hurricane comes, it wipes out a village and children doesn't care. When a lion attacks a disabled or a handicapped <laughs> antelope, we're supposed to feel like it did something wrong. No, it's exploitative. It, the lion's exploitative to the antelope, but to the antelope's DNA. Good book on this, Richard Dawkins' The Selfish Gene. But it's he's acting altruistically for his own genetics, his own baby cubs. So it's altruistic and good for himself and his own family line for the lion. And Donald Trump, the way he acts, I bet you he's doing it. What benefits him and his tribe, his family and his extended tribe. Humans have non-DNA tribe too. You have your DNA related tribe and your non-DNA. Now, so then some people go, okay, so you can't admire humans, but you can admire nature. Then that falls. That doesn't work out under scrutiny either because nature is pretty aggressive. So then you go God. But then you're like, which God? If you're a Christian or Muslim or Jewish, then the haters in the non-Jewish Christian Muslim tribe bring up all the stuff about Christianity, Muslim Jew. Oh, well, they were stoning women to death who cheated on their husband. Do you agree with that? Is that the right response? Uh, uh, they were killing man, women, and children in the Old Testament story, and God commanded them to. So if you're like, whoa, okay, and we go over here, like Christianity, and there's other things. I mean, I'm not even going to go into, think of all the things you can criticize on it. Christian Catholicism, you know, the Inquisition. If the Pope and the church is infallible, can't make a mistake, you believe that, so you believe that the Pope was acting correctly to burn people at the stake? You know, it's like, so you have the death of the tri, you have the attack on the tribes of religion. So then people say, no, those aren't the right religions. You need something that's more altruistic, like Buddhism or something. But then, you know, you look, uh, it's not a hard to attack Buddhism or Hinduism. You say, well, look at the fruits of people who follow, you know, this caste system in India. If there's reincarnation, you don't care about helping the poor because if you believe in reincarnation and karma, they're just getting, they're paying for their sins in a past life. I've been to India. I've been to Southeast Asia. They have good things just like America. They have bad things. So I, if I want to go into my hater mode, I can destroy that tribe too. So then people go, well, okay, I'm going to create a more universalism. It all breaks down. And so that is why super intelligent people go crazy. <laughs> that, and by the way, there's probably, you know, if you're alive, maybe we're all a little dumber. That's how we stay alive. You got to stay delusional. So maybe my answer to this whole episode is stay a little bit delusional. <laughs> stay delusional so you can make it through this game. Because if you analyze everything, it's the death of all heroes. It's the death of everything to look up to. It's the death of all social structure. I mean, there's people who look at, oh, well, family structure. What's so magical about family? Man and woman have sex? Okay. Is that, like, is that so amazing? You know? So stay delusional, ladies and gentlemen. It's okay. Don't go too deep. <laughs> there's, a, there's an old poem. How does it go? It's talking about the well of knowledge. It's like drink deeply or not at all. So I think the only way you should become, when you start analyzing other people's heroes, other politicians, tribal leaders, billionaires, mentors, what I would do, I like to quote a religion, Jesus Christ said, do not judge unless you want the standard of judgment you do to others to be judged back to you. That is a pretty profound, whatever religion you are, that's a profound statement because all of a sudden, if you start going, well, I'm going to attack Donald Trump or Joe Biden, and I'm going to put him under this magnifying glass. Look at all that Joe Biden did or Donald Trump did. Do you want that magnifying black glass back on you? Now, you might say, but I haven't done anything like these people. I haven't done anything like Genghis Khan. I haven't. Yeah, maybe you didn't have the courage to act out your primitive instincts. So that's even worse. 
like when I meet people, well, I didn't do what, you know, this for, I'm like, yeah, because you're weaker. So, A, you probably have the same, if you absolute power corrupts absolutely, you probably would do the same thing as Putin or Biden or Trump or Elon Musk or whoever it is you like. You probably would do the same things put in their same shoes. But not only, so you have the same, ah, uh, evil, quote unquote, but a throw on top of that, you're weak. So like you're even less admirable by that same standard. At least they got the courage to act it out. Now you could argue against that and say, well, no, I have self-control and I have the ability, I have virtue that offsets my, blah, 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 whatever. In general, most people that don't pull off that stuff. I saw this, it's like, <laughs> make a little money and you'll see this. You get some nice stuff, people are like, oh, look, you're exploiting the world, you have a Lamborghini and Rolls Royce. I'm like, the only reason you don't have a Lambo or Rolls Royce is you don't have money. No, Ty, if I got money, I would be all totally altruistic with all my money. Okay, well, are you totally altruistic now? Let me see your charitable country. Well, Ty, I don't have as much money as the rich guy, so I can't, well, as a percentage, do you give as much? You know, and then let's examine where you gave it. Did you think it through where you gave it or you just gave it blindly? Like, it's not hard to be a hater, man. And that's why the rise of hater channels and hater comments, and they go more viral because they just ride on the negativity cognitive bias of the human brain. That's why I said stay delusional. Build your own tribe. Don't overly judge your own tribe. Judge about as hard as you judge yourself. My mom, best advice my mom ever gave was Ty. Just remember, humans are super forgiving of themselves and super judgmental of others. And I would add to that, humans are super forgiving of their tribe, their heroes, but super, super analytical of the flaw of their opposing tribe's leader and hero. See that in politics. Like, oh, it's like Donald Trump. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, Biden. I'm like, these. there's more similarities between politicians <laughs> than dissimilarities. So if you like one, don't be too, like one, people are like, what do you think of Putin? What do you think of Trump? What do you think of Biden? What do you think? I'm like, there's a lot in common. So I don't, I kind of think of people in categories. High level politicians to me have a certain type of exploitation. So I guess my practical advice to you is be delusional a little bit. Don't get overly judgmental or you'll destroy everything. Like I opened with the changing the quote of Nietzsche. You know, he said, God is dead. You have, who has killed him? You and I kind of thing. And I was like, all heroes and mentors and leaders are dead in our mind. All the people we admire is dead and who's killed him? You and I by being overly judgmental. But what I'll also say is go deeper, become more intelligent. It's called the Pyrian well. Drink deeply at the Pyrian well. Or not at all, because if you drink just a little bit at the fountain of knowledge, you get kind of, well, I could examine Biden or Trump or Elon Musk. And let me tell you all the books of Bill Gates and Zuckerberg. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you're just not that smart, because if you're smart enough, you realize it's a nuanced conversation. Well, all religion's bad. All Christianity, Islam, they're bad. And this is the good one. The one It's usually the one people grew up with. Ah, Muslim, Islam's good. Or, oh, Christianity's good. And if you look at where they're born, usually about 90% of the time, it's just what their family was. <laughs> Very few people convert statistically. Some do, but not many. And if they convert, they convert into the one of their country. So Americans are like, no, I wasn't born Christian. I'm like, yeah, but you converted into Judeo-Christianity in America. It's a Judeo-Christian country. You didn't convert into Zoroastrianism from Iran, you know, most because you didn't even know it exists, the unknown unknowns. So my point being is, if you're gonna criticize, then you need to go deeper. Like I said, the way I criticize politicians is I'm like, people who seek power, aka to be the leader of a large country, whether it be Russia, United States, Germany, Australia, they tend to fit into a category genetically and environmentally. Their psyche would be higher in narcissism, for example. Narcissists think they can change the world, and billionaires would fall more likely because narcissism has some positive effects like high optimism, for example, feeling that the world will work out for you. So the way I think about it, it's called horses for courses. This is what my mentor, Mike Murphy, used to tell me. He's like, you got to pick the right horse for the right course. So for me, for example, 
before I judge somebody to be, let's say you have a friend who's like super mean, aggressive, low agreeableness, almost violent. Well, is that friend good or bad? Well, in normal times, that person would have highly exploitative traits that society would try to lock up. But remember World War II, World War I, War of 1812? So who would you want protecting you if, like in the War of 1812, another country invaded your city? Do you want the nice people or do you want the aggressive people? So this is called, you know, this is called domain-specific adaptability. So when you're more intelligent, the way you start thinking about people, and I'm not saying I'm intelligent, but when I want to be intelligent, I think about domain-specific adaptions. So you do need some narcissism because you need leaders of countries. But I don't idealize leaders of countries. I don't idealize billionaires. I think of them horses for courses. Mike Murphy used to say, Bet on the horse based on the race course. If it's a long race course, that's a long distance. Find a horse that has stamina, but not so much speed. If it's a short one, you need speed. So domain specific. There's never one horse that's good for all racetracks. And it's the same way with humans. You're going to have a friend who's low agreeableness. There's some advantages to that and disadvantages. So when you examine mentors, I kind of go, okay, if I want to learn how to build a social media app, I should make Mark Zuckerberg a mentor for that specific racetrack in my brain. If you want to learn, you know, how to not be so ambitious, I want to make Buddha who taught, you know, the death of desire and that desire is evil. And so you you bring that person. So you've got to create like what I call a cabinet or a council in your mind where you have like 15 people you admire, but you go to them in their expertise. What was, you know, Genghis Khan can be a mentor on certain things. If you find yourself too passive, not aggressive enough on important things, in that area, Genghis Khan was great. No fear, conquered the whole continent. So start thinking domain specific, stay delusional and think more domain specific and don't get too judgmental. What should I talk about on my next episode? Leave a comment below. Hope this helped. Talk to you soon.